We finally made it to 2021. Happy New Year. In case you're wondering, new is the theme of our church for this year. But new is easier said than done. Some of you have some scars and some pains from 2020. Today, Lori's gonna give us a sermon about what we should do with the pains of 2020 so we could be new in 2021. Our theme for 2021 is new. And our temptation is gonna be to try and forget about 2020 and imagine that we're gonna have this new 2021 and it's gonna be great because what could be worse than 2020? Well, this new that we seek, this new that God desires for us is not gonna happen by wishing and passively waiting for it to happen. That if we wanna experience this new, that we, it's going to take intention and it's going to take vulnerability and it's going to take hard work. Much in the same way that Jesus came down to this earth, he chose to come down the, to this earth as a baby and live with us in the ugliness of our humanity. And we know about the ugliness of humanity. Like we've, as a world, we've experienced such pain from COVID-19, same pain at the same time. Like our world globally knows that the world is not as it should be. We've also experienced the pain that was intended for us. And we've also contributed to other people's pain. We have been a part of that pain. And so we can't avoid pain. But we have a divine calling to transform our pain. That when we um, try to bury our pain and avoid it and press it down and rationalize it, that as pain builds up in us, it has to leak out somewhere. And when it leaks out, it leaks out onto the people around us and mostly the people who are closest to us. And as a result, we don't experience heaven together but we experience hell together. And so how do we transform our pain? And I think the first step, the first step is to name our pain. I didn't say pray our pain away. Yes, I said we need to name our pain because we can't transform it. We can't let it go until we know what it is. And so we need to name our pain. And our God, our triune God, He named the pain. God named the pain in Noah's generation. So let's look at Genesis 6, 5 through 7. And I love the way the message, um, Eugene Peterson writes it. He said, God saw that human evil was out of control. We know what that's about. People thought evil, imagined evil, 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 evil from morning to night. God was sorry that he had made the human race in the first place. It broke his heart. God said, I'll get rid of my ruined creation, make a clean sweep, people, animals, snakes, bugs, birds, the works. I'm sorry I made them. And so God regretted that he made humankind on the earth and his heart was deeply pained. So God said, I will wipe out humankind from who I have created, from the face of the ground, from humankind to livestock, crawling things and the flying creatures of the sky because I regret that I made them. The author of Hebrews wrote how Jesus named the pain in Hebrews 5, 7. He writes, in the days of his life on earth, Jesus offered up both prayers and pleas with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death. You see, the Greek word used for Jesus' crying and his tears is described as shrieking, like a wounded person wailing non-human sounds of distress. And so maybe the author of, of Hebrews, he saw firsthand or, or he heard about Jesus naming the pain when Lazarus died, when he wept at Lazarus' tomb with Mary. That maybe Jesus, he was there when he, Jesus named the pain as he wept over Jerusalem or saw Jesus weep in the garden of Gethsemane. 
where he cried out to God and sweat blood. It requires intention and vulnerability and hard work. And, and many of us didn't learn how to do that growing up, right? We were encouraged not to name the pain. We were encouraged to do the opposite, right? We were encouraged to be strong and not cry. We were encouraged to hold it in and solve the problem and, and you know, quit crying about it and just do something about it. We were encouraged to be happy, to move on. And, and the church especially has been guilty of this. Or we have encouraged people not to name the pain, but to skip over those steps and, and to rejoice and to be glad and, and to be thankful in all circumstances where it seems almost selfish to think about ourselves and how we feel and the pain that is, is going on inside of us. We're naming our pain almost feels selfish and unchristlike. But God is the one who models that it is good and it is helpful and healthy to name our pain, that that is the beginning of the process. You see, I'm not gonna lie, it stings a little to hear that God regretted making us. But I appreciate his honesty and his authenticity and, and even his vulnerability and, and even making that statement in Genesis 6. That, that that was how he felt. And he trusted us with that information. You see, God didn't see Noah until he named his pain. He named his pain and that's when he saw Noah. And thank you, Jesus. He made his promise, right? That he was gonna stick with us no matter what. You see, it was after Jesus named his pain in the Gar Garden of Gethsemane where he's crying out to God that there was a shift that took place in him that allowed him to let go and say, not my will, but your will. And his, his pain was transformed from the cross to the resurrection where we have life and freedom with Him as we begin 2021. Can we just say that 2020, you fill in the blank. Use explicatives if you have to, if it, if it helps bring out the, the emotion and the pain. Cry, yell, scream it out, just say it. 2020 was the worst year ever. It was horrible. You know, now that the holidays are over, we're probably gonna be home for a little bit longer in 2021. But to take this time to pause and ponder and, and to name our pain, and knowing that this is just a practice of it that we wanna to do together because we have this opportunity of this shared experience of COVID-19 in 2020, that we would be able to do this together as a church that we'd be able to look through 2020 and, and what were some of the pain, what are, what are the pain, what is the pain or the pains that we experienced? And none of our pain is not gonna be the same. Some pain that we might have experienced seemed trivial to some, but maybe catastrophic to others. Like pain is pain and we don't have to judge it we don't have to label it as good or bad or you know it's not as bad as what other people experience it's let's just name it and not have any judgment or criticism about it but let's just put it out there without feeling guilty as jesus and god did right they just said it they were authentic and genuine in how they felt so I remember in January 9th, the World Health Organization announced that a deadly coronavirus had emerged. And they talked about um, it being from China. And it was about that time, Paul and I were coming back from Chicago after visiting um, family. And um, we were waiting for our baggage to be checked in. And this person behind us saw the sign um, about flying to and from China. And he made this comment about, wow, I hope you guys aren't from China. That was kind of hurtful. I remember January 26th when we were all at church together and um, kind of getting the, the update about Kobe and Gianna's death and the, and the death of, the, of seven other people in that horrific helicopter crash and how shocked and saddened we were by the news. And I remember the tragic deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, 
George Floyd and Jacob Blake and the pain of the systemic racism that we, we hope and in our minds, you know, think, oh, it must be getting better, but realizing it's not. How kids had to start learning school from home and busy parents not only had to worry about their jobs and getting their work done and getting the housework done, but also had to kind of become teachers as well. We miss markers like graduations and weddings and funerals and, and birthdays and Christmas and New Year's. Like, those are all painful because we're not able to celebrate and honor the way we would have liked to honor our accomplishments and our friends and our families and our losses. And we lost Tim Conaway on June 18th. And that loss, it leaves a huge hole in our church family. We've argued with loved ones over our priorities and our values, and, and, and we've experienced the pain that was intended for us, but we've also, again, contributed to the pain. And we've often felt isolated and alone and abandoned by our friends and our family and, and even by God. But this morning, I, I want to invite you all to come to the sermon after party where, and bring a pen and paper where we will together um, name our pain. We'll start the process of naming our pain and writing them down. And, and maybe even if you don't want to share, you want to participate in the process of writing it down, but you don't want to share, that's okay. Because there's even, you know, sometimes just listening, for me, listening to other people share their pain, helps me understand my own pain, helps me to name my own pain, understand it, and, and to know that I'm not alone in my pain. Henry Nouwen wrote this um, quote. He said, there's no compassion without tears. To become like the Father whose only authority is compassion, I have shed countless tears. And so prepare my heart to receive anyone whatever their journey has been, and forgive them from the heart. You see, naming the pain is a process. It's not just a one and done. It's a process that we, it's a practice and a process that we need to do over and over again. And in our prayers and our pleas, with loud crying and tears, something shifts within us and we're able to let go and our pain is transformed and we experience the new. The new that brings life and freedom and compassion.